This podcast is not intended to be a substitute for therapy. If you are experiencing mental distress, please seek professional help. We are, we are, we are all simple miracles. Welcome to the Wellness Project Podcast. I am your host, Wilson. Each episode aims to bring mental health awareness through exploring psychoeducation, scholarly literature, professional interviews, and the personal stories of people's journey to mental wellness. So, with that said, let's get started. So go home, go line your pockets with anything gold. I remember my first, let's see, my first year at Wright State Mm -hmm. and witnessing the different levels of folks who came out of high school with different levels of knowledge. Mm. However, prior to that, I didn't even give it a second thought that most kids that came out of most high schools that were going to go on to do whatever and, and a higher education being one of them. I assumed most of us had most of the same knowledge we were heading out into the world with or into college with. Mm. And I was drastically mistaken on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, like just the the vast different backgrounds that we all have. Mm-hmm. You and know, it, it tells you um, for me for sure. Um, Make certainly made me feel really grateful. Even I was young, and and it made me feel really grateful that wow, like these guys are going. Oh, I, I met kids at college where yeah. I. I saw what they were doing their first year and, and I would think, wow, I think, are you, are they serious? <laughs> this is something that I did as a freshman in high school. And I thought everyone was at least within a level or two mm-hmm. doing that as a freshman. And then as a sophomore, some might've been doing it then. And then some in math may not have you know gone too much further than stuff. But in science, we all kind of got the same stuff. We did science, we did biology, we did chemistry. However, it was not either taught the same or received the same for a bunch of different people. Depending Um, on like where they grew up and- and I would imagine depending on everything. Yeah. Um, And that's not um, blaming or any, I don't know that there needs to be a blame. I don't know that it's bad or good. I, th- there were just different levels mm-hmm. and some may argue, well, that's bad. Then they're being cheated, but I wouldn't argue that yet. I would say they are just different levels. I, I just noticed at that time, I, I really got aw- awakened uh, to the fact that, oh, not everybody here is coming with the same toolbox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and, you know, it's, it's funny because it's, it's sort of, you know, preached that, you know, public education is the same across the board or, you know, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. we all have the same, same experience. It's like, uh, I don't even know that that's possible. <laughs> no, <laughs> Let alone no, whether no. or not it would be good or bad. Right. Right. So I don't, I, I certainly try not to judge any of that other than saying that if, if I were to hear someone, propose that that isn't the case like well no we you know argue against that I, I would just be certain that whatever they're saying after that is is to some agenda not the truth yeah not to seek the truth which our friend uh our lawyer friend uh <laughs> and i agree so much on yeah. even though that he's uh we we may disagree on some mostly meaningless stuff but right. um we agree that to seek the truth is is uh That's... a noble and uh, sometimes fleeting thing that's happening, but I would I would argue that um, it's it's around as good as any other. It's just we're promoting. Sometimes the people in charge of promotion are promoting different things, but that that doesn't change the truth at all. As long as you seek that truth, it's it's a pretty good pretty good outcome most of the time. <laughs> right. You don't have to worry about really outcome. You're just worried about making sure you seek the truth. Yeah. 
kind of like we do in religion or in, in traditions or anything like that. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. Um, I'm going to go back to your college experience because I'm, I'm curious if there were, you know, just like some other kind of nuggets that surfaced um, for you in that point of your life. But um, I was having a conversation with a buddy last night and yeah, he's he's around our our age. He's kind of in the middle, but um, just really trying hard at this point in their life to to find truth in either a religion or a spiritual sense. And I mean, you know, it, I I felt for him because I I think it's a good thing to do, you know, but trying to narrow down in, in in a sense of like a black and white, you know, solid answer is just, I think you're missing the mark, you know? Yeah. I, I went, so in college, um, it, it certainly for me, I mean, I, I went to a school that was accessible for, um, it was established in 76, I think. So, oh, you know, no. not, not yeah. old, you know, no. 1976. So it's not old. Right. Um, but they made it so that way when you were on, once you were on campus where the, where the actual halls were and the rooms were mm -hmm. library and everything, once you were on campus, you could get to every one of the, the different buildings on campus through underground tunnels. Oh, so it was cool. like they were, the hallways were underneath the buildings. Mm. And so it made it accessible uh, for folks who, um, were in wheelchairs or had trouble walking all, well, it, all those kind of things it made it so plus like with like the winter months and stuff too you know, oh yeah right? so it was uh harsh down in the ohio valley there in yeah. dayton it, it, it the weather gets really bad so um but it made it a place where special needs kids um who had some physical disabilities um could go and be as involved as most with the least amount of inconvenience uh due to uh, <coughs> what they had in indifference of walking or whatever mm -hmm. uh, so it uh again the difference is uh if you if you get out in a way from from the norm and so it, it's really a lesson in, in that nature teaches us that that if we're just open to it we open our eyes to what's going on around us, then we'll see all these lessons that are easily taken. And if we're just honest, again, truth seeking, uh, if we're honest about it, we can we can see that it's probably a good way to go or a bad way to go. <laughs> well, sure. And, and, and I mean, like, I hear you saying, though, too, that, I mean, yeah, there's the academic, uh, you know, knowledge that you're gaining, but just the the life experiences and the influence of of that 20 some thing you know or that 20 year old age is just i find it so interesting it's it's it seems like there's a and, and this is from talking to high school students you know they're 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 finally coming to this finally you know like to this this space of adulthood and certainty and I got to figure it out. I know what's going on finally. <laughs> it's so, yeah. it's so not that Yeah, it, yeah it, sure. just like the floor drops and yep. like, like you, yeah. Like once again, sort of like what you and I were saying at the beginning about that, that curiosity and that false, um, that false belief that the, the world is this big and when you're a child, it, it, it happens again than in your twenties. Sure. Sort of, right? Well, throughout your life. Yeah. Bunch. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I hope so. Yeah. I uh, really it, do. It, it repeats over and over. And if you pay attention, then you can see that, um, if you want to be happy, um, for the most part, um, you can, you can see and follow, um, what other folks are doing, uh, that make them happy. Uh, in, in not not uh, things or things can can certainly um, help. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you if you don't have some things, it, it can make you put a lot of your energy towards those things. And if uh, if you have them, then you're putting that energy ideally towards something else that you either want or need. And so you're you're elevating your your living uh, status, <laughs> right? Uh, making things uh, more comfortable. I would say not easier, but maybe yeah. more comfortable. Uh, if you want to do that, then you can find happiness doing that. Uh, in looking at what other people uh, are different from you, I grew up in a house where. 
people looked different. My, my sister looked different than I did. My dad looked different than my brother. My brother looked different than my sister. Mm -hmm. So um, the, for for my experience has always been that I learned early that people are just, you know, different. I don't even know if I learned it. I would say I didn't learn it. Right. You were, it was just part of your uh, just environment. Like, just like you don't learn landscape to, to not walk. If you don't have legs, you didn't not learn it. It just wasn't an option for you to learn or not. It was, it's what you, what you are. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know how to say it. It's, um, if it, it's not an issue, if it's just never an issue, um, uh, we could learn lessons in, in that also, yeah. um, uh, by every, everybody's different. So maybe that's what drew me when I went and visited that school that I saw different people and I was like, Oh, okay, this is nice. Okay. Everybody gets a kind of, a uh, a, a shot at this, uh, didn't seem like anybody else got an advantage over me. Uh, when I was there, <laughs> sure, I farted around and I paid the price for it. I did well. And I paid, got the prize for that too. And just like anybody that was in a wheelchair <laughs> that was in class, if they did good on their test, they did good. If not, that, uh, not, not. So, um, yeah, so but they at least got to get to class, uh, uh, in somewhat of a fashion that would be, uh, towards the ease of mine, certainly not as easy. Uh, but they, they at least uh, the school made an attempt to say, well, for this group of folks, we're going to try to make it easier for them to get an education while they're here and the physical parts of it mm -hmm. and then see how they do. And I would imagine, um, I mean, well, that's just how smart that we're well, in wheelchairs there. They, I hung around with, uh, I tried to hang around with the smartest, uh, kids a lot of the times in there was a lot of kids there in wheelchairs, so therefore there were a lot of smart kids there in wheelchairs. So. Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, it, it 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 came down to like the like the accessibility of it is what they were trying to make more inclusive, not not the results or the test or the class, because like the class the class wasn't designed to stereotype. No, the student it had nothing to do with it the had class. nothing to do with the class itself, ex it was except for just getting them there. Yeah, yeah, just getting them there. And like now, what it what it should have been, or what I'd imagine was, was um, assessing the student's commitment to the hard work. Sure, you know, I mean, just like they were assessing my commitment to the hard work. There was no difference. There wasn't, to my knowledge, there wasn't even like. On campus, aids. There, I'm, well, I'm, I'm certain of it. <laughs> there, there were no aids that were on that campus that were there for solely helping or assisting folks with physical needs. Yeah. Um, those kids that were there that I that were certainly friends of mine, um, they um, had no need for that. Yeah. So they just needed to get a pathway to get to class and back. Um, just like everybody else could. And so um, if they couldn't go down the stairs in their wheelchair, then, uh, I mean, all they were looking for is a way to wheel down around without the stairs. Mm. They weren't asking for someone to then talk to them after class and ask about um, like other things that could help them unless that person would also ask me an able-bodied person if there were other things that could help me. You know, there, there weren't people there just for a specific small group of folks. Uh, it, it seemed very, very logical to do it the way they were doing it down there. I hope they're doing it the same way now. Yeah. It just kind of like, it, it makes me think back because I, I, man, you know, I studying or uh, school was just not easy for me. You know, I, I really had to study to get, the B or the C and yet part of me shamefully, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to admit, like it bothered me that it came easy for other people. Right. But is that something that I would want uh, to be fixed or it, it's, it's, it's not even possible. I don't think, you know, because for the, for the kid that can just take the test and get the A um, now that I'm older and I sort of look, look back at that. I mean, I wouldn't say that I feel sad for them, but like they didn't learn anything. So like, which is the fundamental goal of 
you know, learning is to put in the yeah, time. Part the process. Part, right? yeah, the process. Of it. And so, it's and it's like, well, because you and I, okay, like if you and I took the same test and I had to study and you didn't, um, you should you should get uh like what am i trying to say like um it's not fair <laughs> you know and like your because you didn't have to study your test should be harder right right and like what like it just doesn't make sense well but you, then you have to stop and say okay where am i where am i starting and ending this race in order to call it fair or unfair mm -hmm. so you have to ask yourself that and and in most situations okay so i'm judging this portion of my life and then I'm ending it at a certain place. That way I can say the result was good or bad, you know? Mm -hmm. So for me, I would step back and say, okay, fair or unfair during what time portion? Because I would argue as, as you know, many would that, that, okay, yes, they have this advantage during this time, but later on, they'll be at a disadvantage should this come up. And, yeah. and then you would then have the advantage. So then would you then give up your advantage knowing that maybe later on you're going to be at another disadvantage? So then you could chase that down to all kinds of ridiculous matter when in reality what you're really doing is you're taking a portion of life and judging it and choosing when to begin judging and when to end in order for that portion to come out with the outcome desired. And I would say, um, that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of pretendy. You don't get to a truth that way right. because you can, you can essentially set up your truth by doing that. You see it happen in, in all kinds of categories. So you ever see somebody doing that and you find out they're doing it intentionally, then you could never trust anything they were going to say because you know that they're just looking to manipulate and certainly not seeking truth. You know, they, they, they have no, in, no interest in truth. If you're, if you're looking to judge something, whether it's good or bad, and you're choosing when to start the judgment and when to end it, because then you're, you're dictating whether it comes out good or bad. Right. So if you're going to share that with someone else that, Oh, look what happened in this situation. It seems yeah. I had a disadvantage. Well, sure. But we can walk it out two more steps and the other person's disadvantaged. And then two more steps from that. And the other person's disadvantage kind of like the global warming or global freezing. Well, of course, w when are you starting? When are you starting to count from? sure <laughs> yeah and like, then then yes it's getting yeah. warmer or yes it's getting from colder this date. from this date <laughs> yeah. so if you're the one dictating when to start and when to end mm -hmm. the numbers well then you're the one dictating the result because if i were doing that in any other situation yeah you would clearly say i'm dictating the result you know if i yeah. have the playbook and then i have the time clock as soon as my team's winning i stop the time <laughs> yeah. and then say you know, my team won. Yeah. Well, kind of. <laughs> yeah. In that, yeah. In that time frame. Right. In that time frame that you yeah. set up. Yes. You know, so well, we have to be cautious to, sure. to judge. Well, and, and you know, I mean, like I can, I can remember a, a conversation that you and I had, I mean, years ago and you know, it, it was just interesting and it, it always stuck with me in the sense of like, like you're not entitled to happiness. You're, sure. you're entitled sure. to the pursuit of happiness sure. or the pursuit of liberty. And it's, it's, it's that word pursuit, the, the, the ability to look at it from as many different angles as possible, you know, take the good with the bad, judge it as it comes, pivot, move. It's, it's not this, Oh, finally, you know, like I have, I have reached this state of happiness. Like to me, that's, I mean, that's kind of set for like when I'm six feet under, Yep. you know? Yep. I say it all the time, um, you know, uh, beauty is necessary and there are people that that would trigger uh, yeah. because they are automatically going to assume that their medias or their cultural uh, perception of beauty is my perception of beauty for one. So they're going to clump, ev they're going to come the word beauty. They're going to, they would argue with me about using the word beauty not knowing what beauty is to me, and it's certainly a subjective 
uh, sure. term. Sure. Um, but they would not look at it in a subjective way. They would say, you're saying that people who aren't beautiful are worthless. And I would say yes to that. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. And I would say I'm also exactly saying that everyone is beautiful so that there are no worthless people. Mm. So, yes, it's, so I would say they're bright and they're right. If they would tell me that you're saying that if you're not beautiful, you're worthless, I would say it's exactly what I'm saying. And I'm saying that because I think everyone is beautiful. So yeah. there are no worthless people that way. And yes, if you're not beautiful, you're worthless. Yes. But I think uh, everyone's beautiful. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so there are no worthless work, people. Right. Right. So yeah. I, I would say yes, though, those people who are, uh, would say that I'm saying that someone isn't beautiful, then they're worthless. I would say they're probably right mm. uh, because I don't see people like that. I think we ha we're, we're beautiful people. <laughs> you know, it's really that simple. It sounds cheesy, but it's it's that simple. Yeah. You know, we... we try to be happy and make other people happy. There are people that aren't, aren't looking to do that. And so we should distance ourselves from those people and keep driving forward rather than carrying the anchor with us. It's, it's a real tough burden um, and it makes everybody around you tired. And, and so if you put your efforts, certainly in, if you're looking to be creative in any sense, um, the ability to be creative around folks who are negative is I, I would imagine it's nearly impossible to do. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm reading this, this book. Well, it's, I'm, I'm reading a book by Carl Rogers and, um, for Christmas, I got like four of his books. So, but, uh, in the first chapter, he describes people as watching a sunset and the idea that, you know, you don't, you don't look at a sunset and, pick it apart and say, God, you know, like this, this could have been a beautiful sunset if it just had a little bit more pink over here, right. or if there was, you know, a couple darker shades of purple over there, then it would have been perfect. Right, right. He's like, no, you, you, you look at the sunset with awe and, and beauty and bliss of just the way that it is and not, you know, there are never two, you know, two, two of the same sunsets. He, even though the sun sets every day, it's, it's the idea that people are, you know, or that you should treat people the same way as you treat a sunset. And I yeah, just recognize like that, it know? for what it is and it's beauty that what it is yeah. and the behaviors that it, that it is expressing uh, out to you, just like a sunset mm -hmm. and then accept it and, and move on. Uh, judging anything really uh, as trying to make a result out of something that is living and, and changing is, is again an absurdity in itself to try to um it's like saying who won the game before the game's over you know like uh, that doesn't really make any sense you know i mean i guess you could guess at it of course sure um, but but it sucks the fun out of like the experience it, of the game yeah I'd imagine. It, it, it doesn't it and and you're not correct or incorrect at all so saying it, it, it is kind of moot you're, yeah. you're saying something that they're words but they have no meaning because um everybody knows the game isn't over yet you know so you so, so what you're saying is is a good or a bad is a judgment of result instead of a of uh a faith in in uh, uh a righteousness or something that's going to be right mm. no matter what uh, instead of the result uh, it's kind of like praying for something to happen rather than praying for the uh, strength the to get sh through that it happens to, yeah to go through something it's uh, um uh if i'm a believer in god so um if you do that uh, and you know the smartest humans that that we can judge or scale in any way that is um in any way uh uh, cohesive has shown those people to be be also believers in uh, God. Mm. Most of them uh, in uh, believers in uh, one God, a monotheist uh, religion or way of being. So, uh, it seems to me that that would probably be the case. And now we're looking at math and seeing in math that we have every single the smallest things on uh, that we know of without opinion about it. I don't know what it means, sure. but I do know 
that uh, quantum physics, quantum mechanics has led us to know that particles that are in one in California and one in Ohio uh, can react to each other continuously uh, it, it without e- faster than the speed of sound. So, yeah. so simultaneously, it, once infinitely. we entangle them mm-hmm. uh, and with uh, other particles and then separate them, uh, no matter the separation distance, it is instant. So... What what math, literally what that math is telling us is that everything is related. So this is one thing going on here. It's not a philosophical thing that I'm saying. I, I don't know why or why it's happening. I'm not, I haven't researched the why necessarily, but I have certainly researched the math that's going on in quantum math. And we use those computers in quantum physics and quantum computers and quantum mechanics today to do everything. That's how we get distances that's how we make uh formulas up that's how we get logarithms Mm -hmm. algorithms that's how all that happens through quantum physics and it never happened prior to that because we found out certain things are linked in our universe and that's just true of what's going on so there's some truths going on uh that we can stop wondering about and stop arguing about and then move forward with, okay, this person likes to pray this way or likes to pray that way. We don't have to move forward with they're right or wrong or that's silly. We don't have to think that anymore. We know now that particles of every part of the smallest things that we can't even see in the air are all related at some point, And we could probably just move on after that. <laughs> you know, yeah. like we, we know that through math now and we've done experiments with it. So Beyond that, we could just share awesome what ifs, you know, um, but if somebody doesn't believe in a religion or, or does believe in one, um, again, those are no need to argue over those things or certainly have wars over those things. We could probably just say, well, I mean, the the thing that is not biased, the the numbers of it show us that things are related, which in itself to me is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah yeah that's a pretty cool well thing. i mean you know i i just feel like today the the i mean there's many things that are that are up for debate and are you know at the surface of of questioning but it, it's it seems like the, it seems like to me the the human spirit is 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 a discussion that is kind of leaning towards nah you know the human doesn't have that and and, and it bothers me because i i mean what is the point of, of having a lived experience if it was not lived, (laughs) you know, like there is no, there is no perfect answer to that. There isn't supposed to be yet with technology and like, I would describe it as a sense of isolation. You know, we, 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 we seem to keep shifting towards the idea that, you know, the more people are separated, you know, the more people are boxed, the more people, uh, don't have a spirit in their life or a sense of, of, of wanting to live and to, you know what I mean? That, 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 that's, that's not good. You know, sure. I, um, we, well, it, it, it seems to me certainly also that this isn't the first time this is going on. Um, if you would just, again, without opinion or using any kind of what ifs yet, I would just state the reality of of what nature shows us. What does our world constantly show us? That when something grows out of the earth, it goes through seasons, sometimes many seasons, sometimes one or two, sometimes hundreds, and then it passes and stops growing, and then it atrophies and goes back into the earth. And from that, something else grows, or it grows again. Something very similar grows again. Another generation, <coughs> excuse me, yeah, grows up and then does that again. So, to me, it, it, there, there's all kinds of things that we're we're just shown in nature. If we would just, you know, we just open our eyes to see what's going on. That's that's what's going on. So, uh, with societies, I would say that is also true. That we've probably been places where it seems like our society at some point would probably get to where we become. When societies first form, they form because of necessity. And uh, I can't do this. That guy can do this. I don't want to spend all my time trying to do this because I don't know how very well. 
and I saw that that guy does. So I'm probably going to just go over there and talk to him and I don't want to kill him. I'm just going to go over there and talk to him and then see if, hey, do you know how to do this, what I do right here? And he says, no. And I say, well, I'll do this for you. You do this for me. That's the beginning of society. And then now, then you get from that, you get to a point where <coughs> everyone can kind of help everyone. And so then you get to a point where some people can take advantage of that to the point where they kind of get lost in the mix of doing their part mm. and they just end up being the receivers. And, the, and then, then you get to a point where they're kind of okay with that even. And then you get to a point where it kind of gets promoted because people find a way to take advantage of that person's laziness. And they say, well, wait a minute, they're lazy if I show them that they can just stay lazy mm-hmm. by, by doing something for me mm-hmm. that requires very little effort, like a vote, yeah. then, um, wow, I can really, I can essentially for nothing, I can pay, you know, essentially pay these people the little that they, <laughs> that they need yeah. to make them just comfortable in their laziness, which doesn't take much to, to have somebody comfortable in laziness. So we can do that. And then you get to a point where there's more of those folks, the lazy, than there are of the working and then the people who are supporting them. And then you get to a point where some of those people supporting them, they don't think that's such a great idea anymore. They're not, they feel like they're kind of getting cheated. So they're like, well, I want to be on the other side. And then it turns into this. Once there's a tipping point, it really pours to the other side and then what happens with an outside entity sees that happening and seizes the moment when it does happen and then takes it over it all. And then you have, then you kind of start, or that society crumbles completely on its own, it implodes, and then it has to start up again with two people saying, hey, I made it through that and uh, I can make these things. Did you, you made it through too. You can make that thing. Let's start a society again. <laughs> 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 and that that's life. So to for us to pretend that that probably like we're on the first go around on mm, that, yeah, would seem silly because it seems like it's going pretty quickly from we're we're 40 moms away from Jesus. Okay? So 40 moms ago, if if you have a generation of 25 and mom had a daughter at 25 and she had a daughter at 25, we're only 40 moms away from Mary, Jesus. Okay. That's 2000 years. We're only 40 moms away from that as if a mom has a daughter every 25 years. That's wild. When she's 25. Okay. So in that time, just 40, in just 40 moms. Oh, geez. We've gone from, you know, really, really basic societies Mm -hmm. to where people can live and Super do nothing. Hyper, yeah. where pe- you know, we, we've gone to where people had to struggle and work all day in the, in j- most people just to get by to a, to a point where in some places on this earth, United States being certainly one of them, you can do absolutely nothing, complain about it, get more for doing nothing. You can yell at people who aren't giving you enough as though they're being mean to you for not giving you everything you should possibly want, even though you're giving in put input, nothing Mm -hmm. you can do that now. So the difference between working all day and getting barely anything or never working and complaining about what you haven't gotten yet because someone else has it who does work. So you just, that's happened pretty quickly. Sure. And and, I mean, you would lose, uh, like again, the, the sense of that human spirit. I mean, it would just be, Yes. Washed away. You know, what's that? um, Independence gets washed away with that also. Yeah. You don't have a sense of self because you're not doing things for yourself. You're dependent on others. Therefore, you cannot be independent. And, uh, you know, like you and I take time off uh, to go in the woods and uh, it's a lot for reasons not to go there and we're we're not we're not bloodthirsty folks. Uh, So we're not going there and then we're not starving either. We live wonderful lives. So we go there to be better men, to be, to be better at, at what we were given, our gifts that we were giving. Uh, we're, we go there to try to be better at that. And that involves sitting in the woods sometimes and thinking about things. And um, also it involves some hard work. It involves um, being afraid. It involves putting yourself, willingly putting yourself, not, not society and, and not 
peer pressure, but you alone being independent, individual thinking human being, uh, you going in and making choices that put yourself in a difficult but safe situation and try to uh, work your way through it. And, it, uh, and that makes, it makes me better when I'm out there doing it. I, I'm, I would imagine it makes all of us better. And anybody who tries to do that, I wouldn't say get out in nature. It's a good lessons out there. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and I feel like the, the last couple of trips too out there, a, a big uh, mission for me where um, I would even say uh, the greatest purpose for why I go out into the woods is to briefly pretend or to have that experience of having lost something you bet you know and 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 to to regain that appreciation for it you know thankfully you know if 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 it, if it did happen i mean like that would suck you know to, to 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 have lost something and for have had forgotten to appreciate it that's bad mm -hmm. but but mm -hmm. to go out into the woods and i i i get a sense of that like when, when I, every time i come back it's like wow i i really love having this person in my life because while i was out there in the woods by myself i realized that or those those moments of com comfortability um you want to get out of that you know I, I i had a great conversation with someone on a couple of podcasts ago where I titled it, um, you know, being comfortable with the uncomfortable, because that was such a great nugget of just mental wellness and, and to say, you need to do that. You know, you, you, you should not all the time strive to be uncomfortable, but putting yourself in uncomfortable situations or reminding yourself how much you do appreciate things that that's, that's a yes. good thing to do. We learn the most. Yeah. And by we, I mean, just about every living thing, certainly all mammals, mm. we learn the most and the the quickest. Yeah. Uh, when we when we are in <clears throat> dangerous situations, approached safely. So when we can do that, when we're children, if you can do that with your children, we have them in 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 da dangerous or curious situations. And we approach those situations safely, uh, and uh, with experience uh, with them. But let's not forget that we, we really learn in those situations. Yeah. We really, yeah. really learn in those situations. We grow in those situations where we're, it's a dangerous or curious or new situation, mm -hmm. but we're approaching it safely. Um, there's no better place to, to grow. We grow the fastest children for sure. Grow the fastest in those situations. When you, when you're out there, uh, it's one of the reasons why we, uh, shoot firearms uh, w with my kids because it's something that is uh, certainly could be um, has the potential to be dangerous. Um, of course it is. Um, they're firearms. Um, however, when approached in a safe and uh, experienced manner, um, the independence that comes from that is, is such a wonderful thing. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's the ability to be strong and to defend something and to use something that has potential of good and bad, just like anything else has potential of good and bad, and this one in an extreme way, and then use it in a good way. Sure. It's a well, wonderful, wonderful uh, lesson in power and in humility, uh, of course. And then young people uh, learn uh, from that the power of those things and and it's a good scare thing too because when someone is knowledgeable about something they're very aware when someone else isn't and so you can you can expose the fools and expose the charlatan when you're experienced about anything in any subject and when it's about dangerous subjects such as firearms or any number of other dangerous subjects um, boating uh, around here you know boating is a big thing so when you're experienced in that that's why the boys uh, ride the boat with us and, and that's why they I let them drive and and feel the throttle and and see how they how it moves when they slow down and when they go fast when they turn and how how on a boat when you turn it it keeps turning and turning until you turn it back the other way a little bit and then you find that little place where you don't have to keep swerving back and forth mm -hmm. uh, and it's really exaggerated on the water 
And so those kind of things, when you're, it's a, it could be dangerous situation, but we're approaching it safely. And the growth that I see happen, uh, certainly with, with my kids in those situations, it's, it's amazing. It's where you want them to grow and, uh, there'll be leaders because of it. Yeah. And, and I mean, to, to me too, um, like what I hear you saying from the philosophy behind it, what would be, you know, you have two options, either you could not do it, be afraid of it, think it's bad and never experience it, learn from it, take it in, you know, or the opposite, you know, it's, it's, it's like, okay, we need to get rid of all guns. Well, then, so you're saying that the, the, the better solution is for no one to have any experience at all with guns or is it to like yeah. what you're saying, you know, like, right. In any other situation, if you, <laughs> if you took silly. the guns out and you did that with any other situation that you think the best solution to, to learn how to make something better is to completely give no knowledge about it. Or to not you know, experience it. I mean, yeah, I was, I mean, to I, not experience it at all. Yeah. That's absurd. That's the opposite <laughs> of how you could be safe with something or, or be uh, good around something or use it for good is to not experience it. That, that just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I mean, I have like... Like, as you were talking, I was just thinking back to for, I mean, in my own life, the, the few people that have never shot a gun before or had that experience, not one of them after having that first experience was like, Ooh, you know what? No, <laughs> you know, it, right, right, it's like, it's, it's like they're, they're, they're yeah, instantly, they're instantly just shivering with, Oh, Oh, I get it now. Like, I kind of want to learn more about this topic. I mean, sure. But for the people that don't want to do it. They're it's empowering. The, yeah. Well, and, and, but for the people that just would rather, you know, not have guns ever, I would say 99.9% .9 of them have never shot a firearm or even held a firearm. Of course not. <laughs> um, just like anything else. If you hate something horribly, the usually people that are loudest about hating something are the least knowledgeable about it. So, um, you know, uh, if, if it's anything like that, uh, the folks that are yelling the loudest are the ones with the least experience in it. Yeah. And again, with any other subject, you would never let that be the case. You would never even yeah. listen to those folks. You would say, come on, that's absurd. You're the least knowledgeable about something and you're the one talking the most about it. Yeah. We would never them. allow that. We would never let someone who hasn't coached a game give a conference about coaching football. And, and, and when we have three, uh, Hi, uh, three Super Bowl trophy winning coaches. Would we pick the one that doesn't has never coached a game, or the three su or one of the Super Bowl winners? <laughs> we would talk. We would sit around in a crowd to the Super Bowl winner. Sure. We would never sit around and listen to a word that the person said about football that hadn't ever coached a game. Right. right. So, but we do that with other subjects only because they're driven by again people who aren't seeking truth. People are who are pushing some agenda and it happens not just in our country it happens everywhere it happens with black folks white folks some um, republican folks uh, liberal folks democrat it, it happens with every uh, all different kinds of folks they're they're good and bad folks uh, uh but if you're aware so if you if you practice the good i, I used to say all the time when if, if you walk into a room and everybody's kind of got grayish shirts on and you walk in and you're kind of shady gray too um kind of don't get noticed mm. you know you, you nobody knows you're a little bit shady gray yeah. you know but if you hang out with folks with the clean clean shirts on and you walk in and somebody walks in and they kind of little shady gray sticks out like a sore thumb so we choose the groups in which we hang out in and how gray we want our shadiness to show up so if we want, and we can change that over our lives. So if we want to get better and better and better at um, whatever it is we're doing, it, uh, I, ideally, it's usually good things. Uh, you know, if, if you want to make your community um, more productive and more prolific in, in doing things for other people in a, in a more generous community, in mm -hmm. a community where other people want to come in and spend their time uh, because it's a, it, it, they feel welcome and, and they feel really nice and they feel well in your community, then that, those are the things that, that you need to be doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fair enough. Love it.
hold each other close, walking in the rain. You were like a picture and I the frame. You were like the air and I a plane. By the way, at The Wellness Project, we have merchandise. That's right, all mental health awareness themed products. Uh, we've got artwork, we've got shirts, we've got hats, uh, we've got candles. We're gonna have uh, one for like anxiety awareness, depression awareness, wellness awareness, which is actually out right now. That's right, you can get your own wellness awareness candle. What does it smell like, right? Mm, you have to come in and check it out. But if you hit me up on uh, Facebook or you can email me and I can give you that information and thank you for your support. There's a million places I could go, it's so easy.